Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is Module 8, Lesson 1, Multiplication Properties of Exponents. After this lesson, you need to be able to find products of monomials, find the power of a power, and find the power of a product. Let's learn. Product of powers. First, a monomial is a number, a variable, or a product of a number and one or more variables. It only has one term, which is where this word comes from, mono, meaning one. The term a to the fourth is a monomial. It is a variable. There's only one term here. But be careful, an expression that involves division by a variable is not a monomial. So a, b over c is not a monomial because we're dividing by c, even though it appears that there's only one term. Our first key concept here is the product of powers. So what this is saying is to multiply two powers that have the same base, you are going to add their exponents. So what you're going to see as the rule, for example, a to the m times a to the p, they both have the same base of a and we would add their exponents. So whatever m is, whatever p is, we would add them together, and this would give us our new exponent term. So we can see in numbers here, b to the second times b to the four would be b to the two plus four, which is b to the six. So this would be the most simplified version of what we started with. d to the three times d to the seven would be d to the 10, because we just add three plus seven. So when you are multiplying exponents with the same base, then you're going to add their exponents. Example one. Product of powers. Simplify each expression. We have 3n to the 4th times 4n to the 7. The number here, the coefficient, doesn't matter if we're trying to decide if they have the same basis to add. What we're going to look at is the variables. Anything that has the variable of the same base, those are what we're going to use. So we're going to regroup. Instead of putting 3 and 4 separately, let's put them together. And then we can group together our n terms. Now we can use our product of powers. So n to the 4th times n to the 7 would be n to the 4 plus 7. Now, completely simplifying, let's multiply this all out. 3 times 4 is 12. 4 plus 7 is 11. So our final simplified power would be 12 n to the 11. Even when we have more than one variable, like in example 2, we can still group things together that are alike. So 7 and 2, we can group together. x and x to the 4th, we can group together. So let's just put those together right now. We would have, this is really a hidden one. So we would have one plus four. So we know that this is gonna be x5. We can do the same with our y's. So I have y2 and y3. I can group those together. This would be y to the two plus three. So it would be also five. Now I can put them back together. Seven times two is 14. X to the fifth, y to the fifth. Again, that would be my most simplified version. I have one term with only one of each variable raised to a power. Check your understanding. Simplify these two products. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. First, you should have had negative 49n to the 8. The other one should be 11x to the 7y to the 15. For the first one, 7 times negative 7 is your negative 49. n to the 8 comes from this is n to the 7. This is really n to the 1. So 7 plus 1 is 8. For the second one, there's no coefficient here. So that's just a 1. 11 times 1 is 11 x to the 6 times x to a hidden 1 would be 6 plus 1 is 7, and for y, 6 plus 9 is 15. Example 2, product of powers and scientific notation. Our real context here is stars. The fastest recorded star in the Milky Way galaxy is US 708, which travels 2,700,000 miles per hour. How far does US 708 travel in one year? Write your answer in scientific notation and round to the nearest tenth. Hint, one year equals 8,760 hours. So to do this, First, as a quick review, scientific notation is, it's a number less than 10 multiplied by 10 to a specific power. So you have a number and it's gonna be times 10 to some power. That's scientific notation. This number out front has to be less than 10 and it won't be negative. So to do this, let's look at our steps. So step one, let's convert the speed of US 708 and the number of hours in a year to scientific notation. We have 2,700,000. So to change that to scientific notation, we're going to take the numbers and make it less than 10, so 2.7, and then we need to figure out what we multiplied by. So here it was 2.7 and then times 1 million in order to keep our value. Then we're going to change our 1 million into our exponent 10 to the 6th power. Now, the quick way you can do this, if you figure out where your decimal goes to make your number out front, how many spaces would you have to go to get to the end? Here I would have to go 6 spaces, so this would be times 10 to the 6th power. So for hours in the year, we have 8.76. I'm going to take all my digits, make it less than 10. Here, I had to multiply that by 1,000. And 1,000, also 8,600, have three zeros. So it would be times 10 to the 3. 
Now that I have those two things in scientific notation, let's use our formula for distance equals rate times time to figure out how far US 708 travels in a year. So here's our hours, that's our time. We're gonna plug in its rate. So how fast is it moving? 2.7 times 10 to the six. Now let's regroup. So we put 2.7 and 8.6 together. So let's put 10 to the sixth and 10 to the third together. We'll multiply out our coefficient values, which is 23.652. Then we can use our product of powers over here. So 10 to the sixth times 10 to the third would be 10 to the six plus three, which is 10 to the nine. Now to get this back into scientific notation, we need to make this number here less than 10. Right now it's at 23. We got to make it less than 10 by moving the decimal one more place to 2.36. Because we're moving it one more place over, we'd have to multiply by 10 again, which is where this 10 to the one comes from. So now 10 to the one times 10 to the nine, 10 to the one plus nine. Our final solution then would be 2.3652 times 10 to the 10th, which rounding off to the nearest 10th, notice we waited till the very end to do that. We get 2.4 times 10 to the 10th. Check your understanding. Read through the situation now to figure out which of the correct choices shows scientific notation for the situation. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have said C, 8.3 times 10 to the sixth pixels. Let's see how to get that. First, we have a resolution of these two things. So we're trying to figure out multiplying these two things. One of them is 2160 by 3840. Right? We're just really trying to find an area of a monitor here. So let's multiply them, but we got to do it in scientific notation. So 2160 would be 2.160. So 2.16 and then that zero, we'd have to go times 10. And there's one, two, three to make it a thousand. So 10 to the third. And we're going to multiply that by the same because it's a thousand. So it would be 3.84 times 10 to the third. When we multiply 2.16 times 3.84, we get 8.2944 as when we multiply those two. When we regroup and multiply our 10 to the third times 10 to the third, we would get 10 to the sixth. We don't need to adjust anything because this number is less than 10. So 8.2 would just round to 8.3 and then the rest would be the same. So 8.3 times 10 to the sixth, which was C. Let's learn power of a power. So our key concept here is power of a power. What this says is if you have a power raised to another power, you are going to multiply the exponents. So if we have a to the m and then raised again outside of parentheses to the p, then we would multiply m times p. So in the previous example, we added the exponents here when it's outside parentheses and we're raising it again, then we're going to multiply. So b to the second, then raised again to the fourth power would be the same as b to the two times four, which is b to the eight. What this means, is you had b to the second four times. So if we were to break it down, b to the second four times, then we write it like this. Since they're multiplying with the same base, we would add the exponents. We still get b to the eight. So the faster way, multiply if you're raising a power to a power. Example three, power of a power. Simplify each expression. First one, we have n to the five to the third. So we're going to multiply those things. We see a power in parentheses raised to a one outside. So five times three is 15. So this simplified is just n to the 15. In the next one, we have x to the four raised to the another two. So four times two is eight. And that's it for power of a power. Check your understanding. Pause the video now and simplify these expressions. Check your answer. In the first one, n to the four and then to the 11 would be 44. Four times 11 is 44. And in the bottom one, we have negative seven and negative three. A negative times a negative is a positive, so this would be positive 21. Let's learn power of a product. Our key concept here for power of a product, if we're finding the power of a product, meaning there's a power outside of the parentheses and something multiplied inside the parentheses, then you need to find the power of each factor inside the parentheses. So what this means is if we have a, b to the m, what we're gonna do is almost kind of like distribute the exponent to each factor inside. So a would be to the m power and b to the m power. So if we look at our example with numbers here, we have negative five x squared y, that three, which all of it is raised to, would go to each thing. Then we're gonna use what we just learned in power of a power. If there's already an exponent, then we just multiply them. So negative five to the third, this was a one. So 
1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 for the x's would be 6, and there's a hidden 1 again for the y, 1 times 3 is 3. If you have a number, then you need to multiply that out as well to simplify it as much as possible. So negative 5 to the third power, negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 is negative 125. The other ones we can't simplify any further, so this would be our final simplified expression. Example 4, power of a product. Simplify each expression. We have 3x to the fifth, y to the second, all raised to the fifth power. So let's distribute our exponent to each part, and we're going to end up with 3 to the fifth, and x to the 5 times 5, and y to the 2 times 5. 3 to the 5th is 243, 5 times 5 is 25, 2 times 5 is 10, so this would be our final simplified expression. For the next one, distributing that 2 to each term, we can see we'd have negative 5 to the 2nd power, a, there's a hidden 1 here, times 2, and 4 times 2, simplifying what we can. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, 1 times 2 is 2, 4 times 2 is 8. Check your understanding. Simplify the two expressions. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have got 64x to the 9 and y to the negative 6. And for the second one, you should have got 729a to the negative 18 and b to the 6. Now, moving forward, there will be rules that we will need to follow for negative exponents. However, that will not be dealt with until lesson 3. So for now, we will leave the negative exponents in our simplified expressions. Example 5, powers of a product and area. If each side of the smaller square is x inches and the side of the whole canvas is s inches, then what is the area in terms of x? So the length here of the canvas s can also be described as 5x, right? If this side is x, then we got 1x, 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. So if we're trying to put the area in terms of the side, which is 5x, Instead of s, let's plug in 5x. So now we have 5x to the second power. We need to distribute that 2. We'd get 5 to the second power and x to the 1 times 2. Simplifying that out, we would have 25x to the second power. So the area of this canvas would be 25x to the second power. And that is in terms of the side of a little square on here. Check your understanding. Read through the situation and choose the best answer. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answer. You should have picked B, 1 over 512 x to the third power pixels. So first, to figure this out, it is a cube, which means it's three dimensions, right? We have a cube, my terribly drawn cube here. If each side is 1 8 x, then we're going to do that three times. So I would have 1 8 x three times to the third power. So when I'm doing this, it would be 1 8 to the third and then x to the third. x to the third is easy, it's x to the three. For a fraction, you can distribute actually the number to the top and the bottom of the fraction. So 1 times 1 times 1 is still 1. 8 times 8 is 64, times 8 again is where you get your 512. 